All right. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Kayla. I am our training manager here at Green Rope. If you ever need to reach out to me, feel free to do so here. Uh, you can also always reach out to support in the help section. Again, I don't know why my camera is doing this. Hopefully you guys can still see me or still hear me even when my camera breaks up. Um, <laughs> I see the mic icons working, so I'm hoping that that's fine. Um, Anyways, so let's go ahead and get started. So today we're going to talk about a few features that we've implemented. We have a new plus me button that's at the dashboard that I wanted to talk about. We also have some new engagement reporting and a new way that you guys can use SMS for automation. So the first thing I wanted to point out is, let me go ahead and get my account open. I don't know why I don't have it open over here already. Sorry, I usually do, but today, today we decided not to because I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and get that. Oh, goodness. Sorry. Let's go ahead and see. And I just want to let you guys know this is a Q&A. So I'm going to be going over these features. But at any point that you guys have any questions, for free, feel free to drop them in the chat, drop them in the Q&A area. Um, I'm looking at both of them. That's why I keep looking over here is because I have a second screen. So feel free to drop any questions you have, and I will make sure to answer those uh, before we end our webinar today. Alrighty, so let's first talk about this plus me button. So now when you go into the dashboard or into the, uh, to um, anywhere where the to-do list is, you will now see this little plus me button. What this is, is this allows you to assign an activity for yourself. So I know a lot of people do this, especially salespeople, they'll sign an activity for themselves to, you know, maybe they need to remember to send out an e-blast every month, or they need to remember to review uh, open opportunities every week, right? So this is a good way in a fast way that you can do this. So you can find this on the dashboard. You can find it on the compact dashboard right here. If you go to the expanded dashboard, uh, it does, I think it takes a second to load because it's got to load the to-dos. There we go. So it's over here. Or if you go to view CRM to-do list, you'll also find it in there, right there. So when you open that up, it's going to pop up this little pop-up that's basically going to show you, uh, it's just like you would be creating an activity in the contact record itself. So. So I just wanted to point that out because it is a cool new feature that we have. So next thing was engagement reporting. So let me make sure I know where to go. Okay, there we go. So if I go to contacts, reports, and I believe it's in CRM activities, yeah, under engagement. So now when you are looking under engagement, you can look and see if anybody, if any of the contacts in a group have no future um, activity scheduled. Again, I don't know why my camera's freezing. Sorry. Hopefully, again, I don't think it's affecting the quality of the audio. Okay, we're good. Um, anyways, so in here, you can look and see what contacts in this, uh, in this group that I'm in have no future scheduled activities. So that means that they have no future uh, engagement lined up. So that you can do this for contacts in the group, but you can also do it for companies in a group. So if I want to see all the companies in this group, I could do that. And it is still interactive. So once I click on it, it will show me all the companies slash contacts that it is referring to in this graph. So right now, seven out of the seven uh, companies in this group do not have CRM activity scheduled. So if you guys were trying to do a re-engagement campaign or you were trying to, you know, maybe do some um, like uh, cold lead nurturing and stuff, you could use this as a good way to do that. I'm going to go ahead and stop my video and start my video, see if that kicks my camera back in just because it's really annoying for me to keep seeing my stalled face on the other on the other screen um okay it's taking its time there we go okay cool so that was another thing it's a it's a really good way for re-engagement so you can again do it for companies and contacts so awesome all right again feel free to ask any questions i can always go back and answer anything if it's about these or we can talk about new stuff once we're done uh, with this stuff so just letting y'all know all right so the last thing is sms automation so let me actually see if i can get our sms pulled up because i don't have that in my test account okay so do 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 so in my training group oh there was a session error Okay, I think my internet's just struggling. I think my internet's having a really hard time right now, which is odd because it really never, never has an issue before. Oh, I see. It's because I've logged in. Okay. Let me log in again. It doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like that? Oh. <laughs> okay. 
All righty. Sorry, guys. So we do have some new SMS automation. So you, um, so in case you didn't know this, you were always able to uh, activate workflows through SMS using keywords. So now this new uh, um, automation is allowing you to activate uh, workflows when anybody texts a number, period. So the difference in that is instead of the uh, system having to look to see, oh, in this text message, they said yes. Okay, yes gets us this workflow. Now you can say, hey, every single time somebody texts this specific phone number, it's going to send out an automation, which can be really good way of making sure that your um was is make of making sure that your uh salespeople or whoever is monitoring the phones knows that they have a text message to go look at. So if you don't want it tied to a phone number necessarily, you just want phone, you just want text messages coming in, you could set this up to do that. So okay, sorry that took me so long to get here, but here we are. So in here if you go to a phone number, so this, I believe, is our main support number. If I wanted to, I could say, hey, anytime somebody texts this phone number, just send uh, activate a workflow to send an alert to support, right? And so instead of us getting the phone number onto our actual numbers, it would, I got to go all the way down, hold on, right here. So instead of that, it would actually just activate the workflow anytime te somebody texts the number, period. So like you see, we have these, uh, we have the opt-in keywords here. So if somebody spent, sent something specific, they would trigger these workflows. But if someone just texts it in general, now I can basically say, hey, they text this number, it alerts XYZ person, they now know to go in and do this. And it can even assign them the activity. So you can assign the completed activity to that person as well, and assign another activity using the workflow. So this is allowing that kind of freedom of, okay, instead of having a specific word to trigger the workflow anytime a text message comes in this workflow gets triggered so hope that makes sense i'm gonna move this out of the way again oh my goodness my internet is just struggling i don't know why nothing's changed but hello okay see i know it's my internet because i'm trying to drag the tab and it's not allowing me oh it's because it's over there okay there we go Awesome. So those are the three cool features that we have. So I wanted to point those out. Again, feel free at any point to put any questions or comments into the chat or in the um, Q&A area. I, I'm managing. Okay, hold on. Not responding. I don't like that. There we go. Okay. All right. So then now let's talk about... So I kind of already went through this. Sorry. I've been trying to figure out why my internet's having an issue for so for a minute. So this was kind of my example here where say your team has a central phone number in the system and you want to accept a request for additional information, right? But you don't want to have a keyword where they say yes, because maybe, you know, maybe you want them to text you something specific, or maybe you want them to answer a question from a different text. You can now have it do that. You can now say, hey, I'm going to text, I'm going to send a mass text saying, hey, what's your favorite color? And instead of having to go through and to make keywords for every single color, you could just say, hey, anytime somebody texts this phone number, it triggers the color workflow, right? So that that is a, a way to use that new automation. Awesome. So now let's go to the questions submitted by you guys. So just so you guys know, you can submit questions beforehand. If you submit questions through the survey in the emails, you will get entered into the raffle twice, which gets you a better chance of winning the raffle. Our raffle does come with a free hour of training and a seat in our certification. So always make sure that you check those out. All right. So first we have John Whiteman. So John's asking uh, a few questions here. And so we're going to try and touch on all of these. Um, I So let's see. So... Uh, must I have an email address before I can enter a contact name into the system? So to enter a contact into the system manually using the add contact feature, you don't necessarily need an email. Now, we do suggest having email addresses for all of your contacts because it just makes your life easier in the long run because that's how our system dedupes contacts. So if you had three John Whitemans and they didn't have email addresses, you could have three different John Whiteman contact records, which can become cumbersome. So we do suggest using email addresses so then that way our system can say, oh, you already have a John Whiteman at that email address. You, like, you can't create another contact. Go to that contact record and update that instead. So we suggest it, but it isn't required when you add it manually. Now, when you import in, I believe you have to have the, I believe on the import, 
you have to have the email address actually. I know in sign up forms you do. So if somebody, if some, if you're adding context through sign up forms, you absolutely they have to give you your email address. That's not that's non negotiable. Um, I think with importing, I actually meant to look this up, but with importing, I don't think you have to have it. I just it's heavily suggested because again, we can't dedupe unless there's email addresses. So um, so if you just wanted to create a bunch of new contacts with their names and and maybe like a company name, you could do that but you will probably end up with a bunch of duplicate contacts. So it isn't suggested, but it is possible to not have an email address when you're entering a contact. Then we have, how can I send a, contra a contact call report to an associate in our organization? So as far as a call report, you're going to, here, let me actually go back to that because I, I just moved it, of course. So um, let's see. Go there. Okay. All of the call reporting you'll find in here. Uh, well, not all, but this is a good way to go and find your call reporting. So you can come in here and you can click on these little nodes and it'll give you the information as to who's calling who and at what time and stuff. You can click on the bar graphs and see all the people who are calling and stuff. So this is a good place to go if you're wanting to just kind of get a breakdown. The nice thing is, is you can, if you see any graph, you can always download it as an image or as, you know, a CSV and stuff. So it can detail out that information for you. So that might be a place to start. You can also go to reporting. So I'm going to actually do that, yeah, because we have calls in here. So in here, we're going to go to our reporting, and we're going to look at all of our completed activities first because all calls that come into the system come in as completed activities. So when you um, when you call out or when you have a call come in, all of those are completed. So we always want to make sure to check our completed activities. You'll see that those are a lot more of those. And then we want to look at our, let's see, inbound calls. So you can look at the inbound calls here. And so the, all the pinks are inbound. If you double click on it, it will single it out. Now it does take a little bit of, uh, it takes a bit of a second and also my internet's struggling today. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but it will show you all of the event calls. And again, you can export this uh, this reporting using these buttons up here. I'm also searching for the last year. Okay, so that's, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Forgot to search for a smaller time frame. Um, but yeah, so you can go in there and that's where you can find the call reporting for inbound calls and outbound calls. Um, so you see, yeah, finally. Uh, cancel. So you can see all the inbound calls are coming into Lars, our CEO. So, so yeah, so there is a way to do it. You can do it in the activities. You could go into the uh, SMS area itself, but there are a few different places that you can pull reports and you can send it to people. Um, if you're wanting to send a specific associate his or her information, you probably pull this uh, record or this um, report just so that way you can get their specific calls and text message uh, history there. So hopefully that helps. All right, and then we have, how can I print out a customer report listing contacts from one customer company location? Okay, so this one I'm a little confused on, but if you were wanting to look at all of the contacts in a company, that's actually pretty simple um, by going to the, co the company record. So uh, here I was looking at companies. So these are all the companies I have in here. If I click on that CRM button, this is what a company record looks like, right? And the nice thing about the company record is it always lists out are the names, like everybody that's in that company there. So if you have a company, this is all of the, these are all the contacts associated with that company. Now you mentioned locations. So typically what happens when you have multiple locations to one company, you'll end up having what's called a parent company. So for example, say testers me is the main, like the actual company, but green rope is the brand is a branch of that company. Then I would want both of them to have a company record, but I would want to make sure that we know, hey, Green Rope is under this parent company. So when it comes to locations, you're probably going to want them each to have their own record, but you can use a um, like a general company record to also have as the parent company. So hopefully it makes sense because when I click on that, that takes me to that company's record. So, so yeah, so hopefully that helped with that. Um, it made sense of that. And then I believe the last one on, are there any, are there a list of state reports that we can use to print out information from our customer database? Absolutely. So it's going to be in that customer, that uh, reporting area that I showed you under contact. So let me get back to it. 
So under contacts reporting, this is pretty much where you're going to find most of the reporting. You're going to find information about your contacts that you can report on. You can report on different activities, their opportunities. Uh, if you wanted to, you could report on their conversions. You can look at the funnel prediction. And we do also have this custom uh, field here. So basically, if so this is a custom reporting area where you can ask for a ton of different types of reporting. So say I want a reporting on people, uh, different the different wares that people have in their contact record. I could do that and I use the same filtering system that I have in uh, the uh, contact area or the contact list area. And then I run the report and it'll run all the different wares, okay? So this is, uh, this is actually relatively new as well. So definitely feel free to go in here and check that out. But this reporting area is pretty much gonna have all your reporting. There are a couple places that have reporting uh, that's different and that's gonna be the email tracking area. And that's gonna have reporting on your emails specifically. And then there's the website tracking area and that's gonna have reporting on the websites that you have tracked through our software. So if you don't have any websites tracked through our software then you won't see any reporting here. But if you do, this is where you'll find that kind of reporting. So hopefully, so I, yeah, so I think that's, that's what you were looking for. So those are the various areas that you'll find reporting and stuff. Awesome. Do we have, I'm not seeing any questions. So again, guys, this is y'all's Q and A. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat, drop them in the question and answer box. I will, I, we will definitely get to them. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and move on to Derek's question. And Derek's asking about creating mailing sequences, integrating with Outlook. When a prospect responds, are they taken out of any mailing sequences automatically to reduce spam email clicks to dial into dial pad automated activity instead of manually adding activities on each prospect? So I'm a little confused by this one. So let's kind of talk about it and break it down a little bit. And I'm going to stop my video and start it again because, again, it's stalled out. I've, I don't know why. It's just having problems today. Um, I'm going to try and see if it comes back on. Anyways, so let's talk. Okay, there you go. Um, okay, so as far as creating mailing sequences, most of the time, if you, so there's a few different ways you can create, like, a sequence of emails to send out. There are drip campaigns and drip campaigns are per group. So you go into a group and say, hey, every time a contact enters this, is, enters this specific group, they get this list of emails or they trigger this list of workflows. Then there's journeys where you can create basically giant if then statements of, okay, when they come into, when they come through a sign up form, they go on this journey, they get this email, it waits a day, it looks to see if they read or clicked it. If they did, then they get this email. If they didn't, then they get a different email. And it can be a really highly customizable, basically drip campaign. And then there's the other way of just setting up a number of broadcasts to go out at specific times. And so broadcasts can be set up through the emailer or the easy builder. And you can basically say, hey, I want to broadcast at, you know, on Monday and then on Wednesday and then on Friday. The, that's my sequence of emails that I'm sending out. And you can do that by just setting up broadcasts to be sent out. So there are three different ways that you could set up some sort of mailing sequence to go out. Um, there is also autoresponders in sign up forms. So if you wanted it to be, hey, they go through a sign up form and over the next five days they get this email and then this email and this email, you could also do that in the autoresponders in the sign up forms. So there's a few different ways. I need to know some more specifics about how you're wanting to set that up, like what kind of mailing sequence you're wanting. But those are kind of the different places that you'll find a mailing sequence can be created. Uh, and then as far as integrating with Outlook, when a prospect responds, are they taking out of any mailing sequences automatically? So as far when you, when you say integrating with Outlook, what I think of is eye mapping. So you can set up eye mapping by going to... Um, let me go there by going to the group settings. So any user can go into the group settings of a group and hit email web options and configure their IMAP. And basically what this does is it goes and logs into your third party. So Outlook, it'll go to Outlook and it will, and see, you see my testing Outlook emails connected here. And what that's done is it said, okay, we're connected with your Outlook now. We're going to send all, everything you sent through Outlook will now be synced over to the contacts that match those email addresses in Outlook to the contacts in Green Rope. So what that means is if I email um, Melissa and Melissa is a contact in my in my software, as soon as I email her out of Outlook, that email is gonna get brought from Outlook into her contact record here. So I have it in the activities. So that's what I think of when you say integrate with Outlook. Uh, this is a good way for if you're sending a mailing sequence and you wanna know the replies to it and you want it to all be in their activity thread, you could do that. When they reply to an email, it's probably going to go to your Outlook because you're sending through our system, but you're sending through your domain. 
And so you're using Outlook, so you're going to get the reply in your Outlook. But then your back and forth in Outlook will now get brought into the system for you to look back on later because you have IVAP set up. So that's what I think of when you say uh, integration with Outlook. If you're thinking of something different, let me know. But that's what I'm hearing when I hear that. Then you say is a prospect taken out of any mailing secrets automatically to reduce spam emails unless a contact unsubscribes or spam complaints or hard bounces, they will continue to get emails in a sequence. Again, unless you use a journey where there's some sort of decision point where it looks to see, okay, they're not responding, just stop sending them. Um, you know, drip campaigns, again, are very linear. They're going to send out regardless of anything because they don't have those if-then capabilities. Um, and then broadcast, again, they'll send out as long as no, as long as that contact hasn't unsubscribed, spam complaint, or hard bounced. If any, if a contact has done any of that, a contact's never going to get any more emails from that. So that's, that's kind of that point. Um, and then as far as dial pad automated activity, I'm, I, I'm not sure what that is. So if you have an activity called Dialpad Automated, you can set it up to where, okay, a contact clicked on a link in an email and that triggered my link library to trigger a workflow for that activity. Um, so there's a few ways, but I would need way more information on what the Dialpad Automated activity means. Um, but there are a few different ways that you can trigger workflows to assign activities for you. Um, so workflows assign activities and there's the link library drip campaign sign up forms user fields uh, tags tons of places in the software where you can trigger a workflow to be uh triggered uh for contact based on you know if they click a link if they um you could even do it in a journey where hey did they read or click my last email okay great now they get on that workflow too so there's a few different ways you can set it up but i would need to know a lot more so Hopefully all of those answers help. I know I can talk kind of fast. So if you have any questions on them, feel free to drop those in the chat or the Q and A. I do see that there are a couple of questions in the Q and A. And so the one that was sent said, how did, uh, so the one I was just sent said, how did you get to the email config area again? Yeah, so if you go back here and you click on this little cog wheel or you can go to settings groups group, either way, we'll take you to the group settings and you go to email web options and then configure IMAP. So this is what you can configure IMAP. If you have Outlook, more than likely the server for Outlook is going to be this. There are some cases that it may not. You can always Google Outlook IMAP servers, and it will come up with a list of a, of a ton of them to try. Um, as soon as you do this, when it comes to Outlook, we do have to authenticate through them. So you'll see a link underneath up here. Make sure you click on that link so you can sign in. And then from there, you can set up your settings and then choose what uh, folders it pulls from. So that's what that's for that. Um, if you have two-factor authentication turned on for Outlook, or if, uh, if you have two-factor authentication turned on, which you have to have for Google, so if you have Gmail, you have to have two, 2FA turned on to use this, or if you have it with Outlook, you will have to create what's called an app password through your security settings in your email client. So we have a ton of help articles on that, so feel free to go into the help section and look up IMAP. And it will, there's a few, there's a few different ones of like how you can sync to your iBox, your inbox or your Gmail suite. And this will walk you through your, you know, setting up the app password and stuff like that. So just be, just note that, but for the most part, you just go into the configure IMAP area and set it up. Awesome. And then we had another question. If you add a tag to a prospect, will it automatically start a drip campaign if that, ta if that said tag has a campaign started? So I'm not really sure what you mean by tag because tags can't start drip campaigns. Again, a contact entering a group is what starts a drip campaign. Now you can have workflows that start drip campaigns for you. Um, so if we go to contacts tools and we go to tags, you'll see in this tag, I can trigger a workflow, right? And so um, I, oh, there we go. Automation on assignment. So I can say, okay, whenever they get this annual tag, they are going to be put on the send me an alert uh, workflow, right? Now that workflow could either A, put me into a group that has a drip campaign. And then therefore anybody who gets tagged with that tag will get a drip campaign started for them. Or B, in the workflow, it can start the drip campaign for them. Now, I typically try to tell people that it's easier to have it based on a group than the workflow, because if you're ever like, hey, how do they get put into this uh, drip campaign? It's only in this group that it can get a little confusing because 
joke campaigns are meant to be specific to groups, but you absolutely could have it to where you have one joke campaign and everybody goes through it. And then in the workflow under the trigger actions, this is where you say, okay, they go through this joke campaign and they, you know, maybe they restart it or they advance a step in it or they complete it. This is allowing you to basically move them through the joke campaign as well as, you know, starting them on it. So I would say, more than likely what you'll have happen is you'll have it to where, hey, this tag enters them in a group by going to modify contact. So it adds them to this group. This group has a drip campaign. Now they're on this drip campaign. And then maybe they get a tag later that says, oh, they are a different person. Okay, in that tag, they're on my my drip campaign here. Let's go ahead and advance them a couple a step, right? So this is a good way to have them move along the drip campaign. You could have them start it, but it's more than likely going to be that you use this for moving them. And so again, adding them to a group starts the drip campaign. This will move them along it. So, and again, you can trigger a workflow to do any of this with a tag upon the tag being added to that contact. So 